Hello from Farland. Welcome to Layout Science. This is the first episode of Layout Science. How to build a railway that runs smooth. You don't get derailings and it's a joy. For instance, the other day I came downstairs, I started up my trains. Well, actually, I was working down here. I was working on some uh, cable trunking from uh, scale model scenery and getting that built and uh, installed a little bit. And then I thought, hey, I'd like to run some trains. Started them up and they ran and they ran and they ran for an hour. What a pleasure. I parked them, went upstairs with a smile on my face. I have had layouts where I couldn't do that. I'm going to show you the tricks and knowledge of how to build a perfect layout to run smoothly. Let's start by talking about the difference between angles and grades. A grade is a percent incline. It's expressed as a percent. And what it means is this board, this is the best way to explain it. This board is 100 centimeters long. I can shim it to be elevated at whatever I want. This has centimeters on it, and at, at dead level, it comes to here. So as I raise this, I'm changing the grade. You know, at, at 5, if I put this set at 5, there's 5, then I have a grade of 5 in 100. Because a grade of 5 and 100 is an angle of 2.86. If you ever want to, you can find out on, on the internet how to convert that. The math is, is not that bad, but they have calculator pages where it just spits it out for you. Makes it nice. So that's the difference between angle and grade. Railroad, railway engineers want to talk about grades because it's easy. If you're surveying and you've got a telescope that can be leveled perfectly, and you've got a man with a stick that it says zero if he holds it on the ground, it says zero in the telescope when he's standing next to you. If he goes down a hundred, well, let's say feet, feet's pretty handy. If he went a hundred feet down the track, held his stick out, and you looked at it through the telescope, you would see that it was uh, whatever it was up or down from where you were. So if it was if it was up five feet, it was five feet higher than where you were, 
that would be a grade of five in a hundred for that piece of track. Drivers are taught that to the point that they know exactly what to expect. Okay, that is grades and angles. Now let's talk about foam inclines. I think there's a couple companies out there making these. These happen to be Woodland Scenic, a Woodland Scenic segment. You buy a box of them and there are various segments taking you from four inches on the 3% uh, risers, four inches down to zero, just by lining them up one after another. But you have to have these on an absolutely level surface. You can't have boards that are uh, misaligned, one slightly higher than the other, and it's not good enough to shave it off. You actually have to shim everything until it's and shim. Okay, what is? How do you shim things? Well, these work. That's not what I use. I use basswood, but. You have to get things so that they're absolutely level. No bumps, nothing. No, no wow in the board. No, no bulges, bumps, wiggles, squiggles, anything. In fact, if you leave anything lay on there, laying on there and put these down, what it does is it telegraphs whatever you do up to the top perfectly. So, you know, if you let's do something that's not as extreme as that, you're probably not going to leave your pencil in there. Let's just leave a little bit and you're going to glue this down so that it won't go anywhere. But what happens is this becomes very steep and that less so. And that can sometimes be enough if you've got a locomotive loaded up, you know, as much as it can pull up this incline and all of a sudden it runs into one of those, what's it going to do? It's going to start spinning because it's steeper than, the, than what it was designed to go up. So you have to be very, very careful that you build a platform to set these on that's absolutely level. Now one way around that, if you could find good timber, is to get a starter. Unfortunately, this, this starter has a little bump in it, but if you, if you, uh, if you glued that down, you'd take that out. And they start from, move that down, they start from virtually zero at this end and take you up to, I don't know, three-eighths of an inch or so on the other end. Enough that you can slide a nine millimeter board under it and, and continue up with the board. But your board has to be absolutely straight. Uh, one of the ways you can stiffen a board that is unruly but is close is to put Another one underneath it like that, that has a straight side on it. If you glue and screw that to it, it'll flatten it out and you'll have a true surface. I've had to do that in a few places where my plywood, I bought really high quality plywood for this. I, some people think I went overboard. It was, a, it was hardwood plywood, nine mil. And it was a five or six ply, I can't remember. But even whether, whether it gets wet or whether it gets moist or hot or cold, still stays flat. And that was very important to me because I had a, the layout that I built before this. I was using real cheap three ply plywood from the home center. And man, it was going up and down all over the place. And I kept going back in there and bracing it and trying to suck it down so it was flat. But it, it was nothing but trouble, honestly. And I don't want you to go through that because you'll be frustrated 
What I'm doing here is I'm trying to keep you from doing things that will make you frustrated and think it's all a bunch of hooey and you don't like it anymore. The way to enjoy it is to build it right and then runs like a top and it's enjoyable. It's not frustrating. Next time we'll cover turnouts, points, switches. There's a lot to cover on those, and so I'll see you next time. Bye from Farland.